Today, I am going to try to run this Cinnamon Koteiman GitHub project locally. There is a link here to the user guide for end users. It is very detailed and has lots of instructions. If you have any trouble with the install, definitely check these instructions out. In the releases section of the GitHub, there is a zip file that I will download. Once extracted, there is a folder called scripts, which has the batch file that can be run to install it. So, I will just double click it to get it installed. Excuse me, but who are you? Why, I am the great Lyra Blackthorn. Um, what? Well, I will take it from here. Anyways, sorry about that, everyone. No idea who that was. It looks like the install is already underway. Great! I will just skip ahead to when the install is just about to finish. See you in a bit. So far, so good. I think the install is almost finished. And there it is. Excellent. We have a login screen. I have no idea what to put for the username and password. So I'm sure it must be documented somewhere. But after spending a lot of time trial and erroring and looking through the code and the SQL database with the user credentials, I have finally figured out the username is admin and the password is admin. Lowercase for both. Since we are going to use a local Llama database, I will first need to install a Llama. From the Llama website, I'm going to download and install it to my machine. Just like how I did it in one of my recent videos where I tried to run this only on the CPU. With that installed, we are ready to set up the other app. There is a link here to set up a local LLM. We will need to run these two commands to download the LLM model and the embeddings model. You can run them from any command prompt from any location. I have already downloaded them. Once that is done, then we can confirm the setup is working from the app. In the Resources tab, for the LLM, for the second row in the grid, leave the API key as Olama and the base URL as it is, and make sure there is a model set to Llama 3.18b. I'm just going to copy-paste it from the red text where it was showing an error message from when I tried this earlier. Then we can click the test button. Success! Now to do the same for the embedding section. Under the Resources, click on Embeddings. In the table, click the row that says Olama. It shows success from when I ran this earlier. Make sure your details in the text box match this, and then you can click Test. Finally, we can go to the Index Collections page. For the file row, make sure it says Olama in the box. Everything for this one already should look like this, so you shouldn't need to change anything, hopefully. Now, when I tried to use the chat, I kept getting API key errors. It took me a long time to realize what was wrong. I forgot to set the Olama LLM as the default for the LLM and the embeddings, so make sure to set it as the default so it doesn't try to use OpenAI. And there is the LLM done. Now to do the same for the embeddings, set the Olama as the default and click Save. We are now finally set up and ready to use the app. For some reason, the chat tab does not allow you to attach text files or CSV files, but the files tab does. I think it may be a bug that will probably eventually get fixed. Anyways, for my test, I want to use the licensed text file that comes with the project. I asked it what is derivative works, but I forgot to attach the text file because the information panel is blank, so it gave me a generic answer. Another thing I kept forgetting to do is check mark the search in files or search in all radio buttons on the left. I think clicking that may be required also for it to recognize your files. Since the box in the chat tab does not allow text files, I decided to rename the file to be an HTML file. I dragged and dropped it to the upload. And let's ask it the same question and see what happens. This time, the information panel filled up. That means it is going to use the text that is shown in the information panel to figure out the answer to my question. It decided to give me a very long-winded answer. I'm going to be honest, I didn't really read all of it, but it sounded kind of correct. For my next test, I decided to change the definition of derivative works. I decided the term derivative works now means a line of ducks walking down a road. I want to see if I ask it the same question. Will it now talk about ducks? 
I'm going to drag and drop the updated HTML file to the upload. I will just copy paste the exact same question. I actually first would like to go to the files and delete the other text file that is still there from my earlier test that I was doing so it doesn't get confused. I'm just going to delete everything here and start from scratch. I can drag and drop that HTML file in this files tab, so I will do that this time. Remember to check Markforce reindex file and click upload and index. Then let's go back to the chat tab, and I will ask it the same question again, and we will see what happens. It is generating a response, but the information panel is blank, meaning it is not reading the HTML file. I went to the files tab and deleted the HTML file, and I'm going to add it into this box in the chat tab. And let's ask it the same question once more. And this time, the information panel has text. Notice how the search in files and search all are unchecked. I am not sure, but I think that might mean that it is not going to actually search the file, even though it recognizes it. The answer does not talk about ducks, but I noticed that there were many other instances of the term derivative work in the text, so it may have just picked up the details from some of the other instances. Now I'm going to ask it if I say many, many ducks, what could that mean? I would think that there wouldn't be any other instances of the word ducks in the license file. He's just giving me a generic answer. I have a feeling those radio buttons on the left matter. Next, what I decided to do was just delete the entire license file and add my own text from scratch. The file now reads, Ducks walk down the road in a straight line. There are ten ducks and three goose. Lots of birds in the air. I'm going to go to the Files tab and delete the existing files. Then let's come back to the chat tab and drag and drop the updated file. And now I'm going to simply ask it, how many animals are there? And let's see how it answers. The information panel shows the file, and it has what I wrote in it. Well, look at that. It is now talking about ducks. Yes. Notice how I never selected the radio buttons on the left. So I am not sure what they are there for. Must be some functionality that I haven't used yet. It says there are ten ducks and three geese, not goose like I wrote. It recognizes that I asked how many animals and that I also mentioned birds. It reasoned that it can't use the birds in the calculation because there is no specific number provided, so it will count only the ducks and geese, not goose, so a total of 13 animals. Fantastic! I somehow triggered an error by clicking something incorrectly, perhaps. No clue. Anyways, Later, I also tried using a CSV but couldn't get it to recognize it, so I'm not sure what I was doing wrong, or maybe there is a bug with the CSV. Well, anyways, I just wanted to check this out and see how it works. In case anyone was interested in doing the same, you can now hopefully see how this application works and how to set it up. Well, that is all for now. Enjoy!